over last eight years, the vision of Digital India has really taken us to a level where we have a very successful, absolutely scalable India stack, and that India stack helped us manage something as big as the uh, pandemic using the Coven platform. Yeah. Every time I come, you know, the sophistication of the India startup ecosystem, uh, you know, it's measurably improving. India was ranked as number one on the talent uh, concentration for AI. Part of what we have done with the India Digitization Fund is increasingly focusing on uh, our investments towards startups from India, like Glance. We have announced a $300 million fund with a focus. One quarter of the fund will go towards startups uh, led by women or, or startups which are focused on bridging the gender divide. We'll be taking the startup ecosystem to tier two cities, tier three cities. There is no better time to do a startup than the current moment, uh, even though we are working through a macroeconomic moment like this. Uh, companies like Google were created in uh, moments of a downturn. AI is going to play a very big role in India's tech story going forward. There are multiple number of uh, fields, multiple number of areas in which AI is going to make a significant difference. Agriculture is one such field. The diversity of languages that we have, how do we bridge the gap between people who speak one language and the other, that's going to be second then making credit accessible to the people at the bottom of the pyramid. Uh, India will also be a big export economy, uh, will benefit from an open and connected uh, internet. If you could re recollect one memorable experience from your days in IIT. At IIT Kanpur, we had a very good computer lab, but the time that was given for programming to every student was always very, very limited. So I used to buy time from others. I'll solve others' problems and take their time. <laughs> I was about to say a story about how I used to have two rasagolas every day, but you know, I'll now that he spoke about uh, computers, hey, you're right. The access to computing at that time, I think, uh, you know, was, was very difficult. Uh, but it's amazing how the world has changed. But, you know, for me, fond memories of friends, and uh, I met my wife there. So that's what I remember most about IIT. You know, how are you focusing on cybersecurity? Quite a few priorities. See, over the last eight years, the vision of digital India has really taken us to a level where we have a very successful, absolutely scalable India stack. And that India stack helped us manage something as big as the uh, pandemic using the Coven platform, yeah. which used all the horizontal constructs of the India stack. We were able to deliver vaccines to a billion plus people, actually 2.2 billion vaccine doses. Scheduling for that scale with all the logistics challenges that we had, right? And giving the uh, certificate instantaneously, it was a massive work and that was only possible because of the technology stack. Having, I mean, uh, having the payment system that we have today, the UPI payment system, phenomenally successful. As we speak, it is almost like India's 55% of India's GDP Transactions are today happening on the UPI, uh, the, I mean, the payment platform that we have, right? So similar digital platforms we will keep on building for health system, for logistics, for many other sectors. That's one part. Second part, we'll be taking the startup ecosystem to tier two cities, tier three cities. We see so much talent coming out of smaller cities and towns, so we would try to channelize that. Third. We will be focusing on very, so India has been ranked as number one talent concentration uh, geography for AI, right? So very recently in the Network Readiness Index, India was ranked as number one on the talent uh, concentration for AI. So we would like to channelize that through very stable, a very good, very comprehensive legal and regulatory ecosystem. How do you see the digital 
India playing a role in the growth of the startup economy here in our country? You know, every time I come, you know, the sophistication of the India startup ecosystem, uh, you know, it's measurably improving. Uh, part of what we have done with the India Digitization Fund is increasingly focusing on uh, our investments towards startups from India, like Glance. And, you know, these companies are getting noticeable scale. Uh, and, and increasingly, uh, you know, as you heard earlier, we have announced a $300 million fund with a focus. One quarter of the fund will go towards startups uh, led by women or, or startups which are focused on bridging the gender divide. I think, you know, to me, the opportunity India has, part of, if you look at the U.S. as a market, the reason startups are successful is when they build something, they have an access to a $300 million plus market. And it's easy to build something which scales across the entire country. This hasn't always been true in places like Europe or because you, you have to scale across 26 markets and it's tough for a startup to get that scale. I think that's the opportunity India has. You know, how do you make sure, uh, you know, a startup can easily scale across the entirety of an Indian market? So I think those are all ways by which, uh, you know, uh, policies can help and we can play a role as well. But, uh, you know, there is no better time to do a startup than the current moment, uh, even though we are working through a macroeconomic moment like this. Uh, companies like Google were created in uh, moments of a downturn. So I think, you know, I, I'm very bullish about it over time. What are some of the areas the AI that you're keen to nurture through the government? So AI is going to play a very big role, uh, I mean, a very big role in India's uh, uh, tech story going forward. There are multiple number of uh, fields, multiple number of areas in which AI is going to make a significant difference. Agriculture is one such field. Um, the diversity of languages that we have, how do we bridge the gap between people who speak one language and the other, that's going to be second. Then making credit accessible to the people at the bottom of the pyramid, that's going to be a major, major task ahead in which we will be using AI. And that's going to ride on the success that we have already had in terms of the payment system, the identity system, and a very rapid adoption of technology uh, across different sections of the society and across all geographies. So we are going to use all these things. And uh, once we have our data protection bill and the telecom bill and the digital India bill in place, then it creates a robust framework in which we can uh, use some of the data sets which are available, public uh, data sets, and then use them and harness the power of technology to provide better solutions, better services. Um, and our focus is always, see the rich people can always take care of themselves, right? Our focus is always on the middle class and the poorer sections of the society. As government, we are very keen to make sure that every section of the society marginalized sections of the society, they are able to get the benefits of technology the way uh, some of us who are uh, better endowed, uh, I mean, similar level of technology benefits they should also be able to get. So we'll be focusing on AI, multiple sectors as well as different sections of the society. Which area of AI's impact, you know, AI's impact excites you the most? That's, uh, you know, I mean, I think it will touch every sector over time and so, but pro for us core to our mission, you know, people come to Google to find information. So where I get most excited is how we can use AI in that service of that mission. Uh, one of our uh, key parts of our mission is to make Google universally accessible and useful. You know, we are increasingly use AI to scale up the number of languages we can offer. Uh, you know, we, we recently added uh, nine new Indian languages, Assamese, Bhojpuri, Konkani, etc. Now we are working on one powerful AI model which can, you know, bring information across thousand languages. So all that we can use to make sure it's available to more people. But over time, I think the biggest change uh, is, you know, as humans, we look at the world around us, we listen to what's happening, you see with your eyes, and then that's how you consume information. So being able to bring all that, we call this multimodal, uh, you know, and bring that view when you ask a question to Google. 
uh, and then get that rich answer back uh, is what I think AI will end up playing a role. Whether you're you know, showing an image or you look at something and say, tell me about this. You know, we want to bring all that as experiences to our users. And I think AI will end up playing a powerful role and I'm very excited about it. What role do you envisage the private sector playing in delivering the India stack to other emerging economies uh, to help them unlock the economic potential of it, especially when it comes to digital public infrastructure in terms of payments and health? So the interest uh, on India stack is there throughout the world. So it's a very unique way of looking at uh, developing technology and taking it to the society, right? Uh, multiple number of small, 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 small constructs which put together can create a great solution. We believe that in this entire uh, development of India stack, the role of private sector is very, very important because the government is providing the platform on top of this platform, any startup, any private sector entity, big, large, small, medium, any size, they can join it and they, they can create their own solutions which meet their requirements. So, for example, the payment uh, is a very good solution. Uh, I mean, a very good example. The payment system from a very small startup payment guy to a big established bank like a State Bank of India, right? They are all on the same uh, platform which government has provided. So our thought process is that we provide the platform and the private sector starts uh, using that platform to build new solutions. So I think not only in the emerging economies, but also in well-developed, uh, very advanced economies also, people are showing a lot of interest in it. We have uh, MOUs on payment system itself with about 30-odd countries by now. And private sector will, private sector will play a very big role in, um, let's say somebody wants to uh, have similar identity system in, let's say France, a digital identity system, right? So our companies can go there, work with their governments, work with their public institutions, work with their regulatory systems, and over a very long period develop a trusted solution for other countries. Yes. Sundar, I have to ask you this. You know, we grew up in an India where we were very happy about, you know, importing from the world. But increasingly, we are living in an India which is exporting to the world. And we are really, genuinely very proud of made in India tag. I want to ask you, how do you look at this trend and how do you see this continuing and furthering? Incredible opportunity. The minister spoke about the depth and the breadth of talent available uh, in the country. In our experience, we see that playing out in Google. You know, we saw the opportunity on top of UPI. Uh, in fact, I used the UPI example in other countries around the world. I think, uh, you know, the fact that you can, t you know, the way the COVID relief funds show up in an individual's accounts instantly, it's remarkable. And, you know, we built Google Pay in India based on uh, the UPI stack. And now we are bringing that to other countries around the world. There are many more examples of it. You know, we used AI technology to develop flood forecasting uh, for India and then later Bangladesh. I mean, this is an alert which gets sent out to 23 million people every year. Now we are bringing it to many, many more countries around the world. So I think you will see this trend grow over time. And, uh, you know, with the scale of the market here, being able to find a solution. And in many cases in India, you can leapfrog and get to the next solution faster. So I think it'll be a big incentive for us to do it here and then take it to other countries which sometimes are slower uh, to, to go through these phases. So I see this trend as something which will inc be increasing over time. What are some of the areas that are important for you? How do you see this emerging in the future? In my view, humanity has created institutions and structures throughout its um, whatever number of whatever number of thousand years it has existed and with each change in technology each big quantum jump that happens in uh, the way we live uh, new challenges come up right and uh, we have to find out ways and means by which by which we create a very balanced way of absorbing technology because technology brings many new opportunities with it it also brings many new challenges with it and uh, in today's world where information is ubiquitous, in India the cost of data is so low 
and adoption of technology is so rapid. In this kind of scenario, how do we create a legal and regulatory structure which is in tune with times, which matches India's needs, which is built around our realities? So that's the way we are working and Prime Minister has given us a very a uh, clear target of creating a comprehensive legal regulatory framework. So we are creating three horizontals. First is the telecom bill, which is for the carrier. Second is the digital protection uh, bill, which is focused around enforcing citizens' privacy rights. And third is the digital India bill, which is going to look at practically everything else which is required to be seen. These are the three horizontals on top of which will be multiple small sectoral focused modular uh, regulations. So it's a very comprehensive uh, outlook. We should be able to complete this exercise in the coming 14 to 16 months. The two bills which have been put up for consultation should be completed by July, August. It should uh, pass the parliament. And uh, we have a very open process of consultation with, the, with all the stakeholders. Uh, our teams are giving time. Um, I and my ministerial colleagues, both of us are, uh, I mean all of us are giving a lot of time on consultation, on understanding what people's, are cons people's concerns are. So net net, the solution which is emerging is really good and uh, most people who have interacted so far with us have shown that, um, have kind of expressed that this kind of template is needed in many other economies which are rapidly getting digitized. Thank you. Uh, Sundar, looking at the global landscape, what's Google's view on India's tech regulations? Look, I think, uh, you know, if you look at the scale at which tech is working, and, and it's so touch uh, touching the lives of, you know, people around the world, uh, to me it makes sense that, you know, tech needs responsible regulation. I think it's important for countries to think about how, how to best safeguard uh, its citizens, uh, be it privacy, be it security. And so I think, I, I think it's an important phase. And, you know, so we, we are engaging constructively. I think India has a leadership role to play here. Uh, again, given the scale, scale and the technology leadership it will have. And it's important to make sure you're balancing, uh, you know, and putting in sa safeguards for people. You're creating... Uh, innovative framework so that uh, companies can innovate on, you know, on top of a certainty uh, in the legal framework. So I think it's an important moment in time. But through it all, hopefully India can also be a voice for, uh, India will also be a big export economy, uh, will benefit from an open and connected uh, internet. And I think getting that balance right, uh, I, think, I think will be important. If you had to, both of you had to give advice to the next generation, which is entering this space, the tech space, what would you say? I would say that think on population scale, think on global scale, because all the constructs, all the uh, basic components which are, needing for, uh, which are needed for creating a very um, humongously big scale solution are today available. So don't think small, think big. No, I, uh, I definitely uh, agree with that. Uh, you know, I would also say for you know, young people, tech is much broader than just programming or uh, engineering alone. I think for tech to work at scale, including things like AI, you know, thinking about the surrounding areas, be it policy, uh, you know, uh, be it ethics, you know, so just thinking about tech holistically, I think will create opportunities for many more people. So, you know, the more people can get involved uh, across all walks of life, I think tech will be better for society. Thank you so much, Minister, for taking our time to be here. Shno, I always say that uh, it shows the commitment to be involved in the tech and the startup econ, to, you know, to building this. Thank you for taking our time. And Sundar, thank you so much for inspiring all of us. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.